The idea of passive income is extremely appealing to a lot of investors. And honestly, it makes a lot of sense that tons of people are interested in it. Wouldn't it be nice to know for certain that you're going to have enough money throughout the year without having to go to work or do anything in particular? You could take a vacation, pursue hobbies, and not have to work a 9 to 5. So it's a goal that a lot of investors have. Unfortunately, you generally need a lot of money to be able to just live passively through stocks. The rule generally being used is the 4% rule, meaning if you have a large retirement or dividend account, you'll only really be able to live off 4% of it, as in 4% is a good yield or withdrawal rate. And honestly, that makes a lot of sense. When you consider dividend stocks, the yields are generally under 4%. I know the S&P 500 isn't known for having a super high dividend yield, but it's a useful example because it exemplifies around 505 of the largest companies in the United States, all combined into one nice little package. However, the dividend yield is only around 1.33%. There are certain stocks that are known for their reliability of dividend and the consistent increases, such as Johnson & Johnson, but even then, our forward dividend yield is around 2.51%. And certainly the dividend aristocrat stocks are well known for being consistent with their dividends, consistently increasing them, and being a reliable stock to get a yield out of. However, again, your yields are not going to be that impressive. Generally, it's a good idea to live by the 4% rule. If you want to live off your investment portfolio, 4% a year is a safe withdrawal rate or yield rate. However, there's a certain stock that has really been garnering a lot of attention recently. And this ETF has a ticker of QYLD. A lot of people will call it Q yield, but it's the Global X NASDAQ 100 covered call ETF. A bit of a mouthful, but if you notice, its yield is well over 10%, which is pretty shocking. That's well over double the 4% safe withdrawal rate. So theoretically speaking, you could set up a passive income portfolio where you have a ton of this ETF and you just live off the dividends without issue. And you'll be able to do it with way less capital simply because the yields are so high, right? There's a couple things that are nuanced about this that go into it. The first thing you're probably asking is, how can this ETF have such an incredibly high yield? What is it doing and is it sustainable? Well, the way it's having such a high yield is that it's using covered calls, which are a type of options play. If you're completely unfamiliar with options, I actually have a couple videos going through what an option is as well as some of the entry level strategies. And I'll have those videos linked in the description of this video as well as in the title card, other things like that. So if you're super confused about options, you can go to those videos. But I won't get into too much detail here. I'll just go through what exactly a covered call is since that's what this entire ETF is based around. Basically, a covered call involves writing a call option contract while holding an equivalent number of shares of the underlying stock. When you create an options contract, that's called writing or selling an options contract, and you make money by doing that. A call option allows a purchaser to buy a stock at a specific strike price. And theoretically, you have an infinite amount of risk when you sell a call option, because when you sell one, a stock has no limit on how high it can go, meaning if you sold a contract saying you'll sell these shares at this strike price and a stock absolutely skyrockets, well, you're going to have to go on the open market to get those shares. So what's more common than just doing naked calls is actually doing covered calls, which involves owning the amount of stock you need to cover that call contract, which is almost always 100 shares. So to go through our example, let's do Apple. Since it's a major tech stock, it's one of the largest companies in the U.S., they have a dividend technically, and they have a lot of options contracts. We'll get the price for the symbol, and let's say we bought at the current purchase price, 100 shares. Now, let's say we write an options contract on the 100 shares that we purchased. So we would select an option. Let's go out to the 2nd of July, and the higher up the strike price is, the less likely that we will actually have to sell our shares because it's less likely that a stock will climb a huge amount. And the lower we go, the more premium we're gonna make, the more money we make for creating and selling this contract because by the 2nd of July, 
it's really not that likely that Apple is going to be trading at $80 a share. So this is a constant balancing act for how much premium you want and how much you want to keep your current shares. In this case, let's go a few dollars out, 130 as our strike price for the 2nd of July. We can select that contract at the mid price. This is just what people are bidding and this is what sellers are asking. So the mid price is perfectly in between. It's $1.33 per contract, which means our total cost is $133. And keep in mind, if we bought at this price, if we do have to sell our shares, we're still gonna be making profit here, as well as the premium from writing that contract. So let's calculate, and we get a graph of what our profit and loss looks like. If Apple stays flat, well, we're gonna keep a lot of that premium without any issue. If Apple goes up, we're gonna make money. However, you will quickly notice that the amount of money we're making tops out at $672. Even though our share price is going to $135, we're still not making any more. And that's because we have to sell at this contract price, which means we are actually capping our max amount of profit. If the stock goes down, we do get to keep all of the premium, all of that $133. However, our shares are not gonna be worth as much, but we don't have to sell them. So we can continue to hold and hope that they'll go up or just simply continue selling options contracts on them. And this is the basic diagram. Pretty quickly, you can see that this strategy is super appealing. If you are a little bullish on a stock, but you don't think that it's going to necessarily spike or soar up. If you sell these at even intervals and you never have to sell your shares, then you'll constantly make premium. And you'll also be eligible to receive the dividends from holding this stock. So really it's a win-win. You're taking in a good amount of money. And we can even change this. We can change the strike price to something closer like 125 and calculate out. You can see the profit is a bit more intense here. However, we cap our profit pretty tightly because we will have to sell at 125 assuming it hits that. Obviously, selecting the strike price is gonna depend on how bullish you are on the stock. But you can see that this is a method that can net a good amount of premium just from writing contracts and holding stocks. Essentially, this is what Q yield is doing. That's why it's called the NASDAQ 100 Covered Call ETF. It holds 100 stocks from the NASDAQ and it writes covered calls on those stocks that it's currently holding. And that's how it's able to have such a massive yield. Also, if you really like this sort of content, I would highly appreciate it if you like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out and I deeply appreciate your viewership. Additionally, if you want to get two free stocks valued up to $1,850, I'll have a link in the description of this video to Weeble, a fantastic trading brokerage. I'll also have more information about it at the end of this video. So that sounds pretty exciting, doesn't it? A huge yield just from holding this. It sounds like a great way to get into passive investment or early retirement without really having to do a whole lot. So what exactly are the downsides and is this sustainable? Well, the first thing to realize is that because of this and because of the capping of max profit, you are heavily going to limit the actual value of the ETF. Let's go to the chart. Now, Q yield is one of the oldest ETFs for this strategy, but as you can see, it does move with the NASDAQ a decent amount, but generally it doesn't increase much in price. If we go back all to 2017, we can see it was trading at $21 around, and now it's trading at $22. Even at its highest, it was trading at around $25.15. So you might say, well, it's not really losing tons of its value. It's uh, sort of, it might have some ups and downs, but it's sort of managing fairly well. Well, let's take a look at the NASDAQ. If we look at a five-year chart for the NASDAQ, you can see the massive amount of growth it's had. Generally, you don't really trade directly off the NASDAQ, so let's look at an ETF that utilizes the NASDAQ, that tracks it like QQQ, and we can go to the five-year chart of QQQ. It tracks the NASDAQ, so it's really the same chart, and we can see back in 2017, we were trading at around $120, and now we're trading at $300. $33, and we've had consistent dividends all throughout that time. Now, granted, it's not a huge yield, but it is some money. So the returns for holding an ETF like QQQ, which tracks the NASDAQ, has created a massive amount of profit for any investor that has dealt with it. And that's mainly fueled by these 
consistent growth periods, but also a lot of these big spikes, especially recently, we've seen huge spikes and massive, massive market caps for a lot of these tech companies. Now, even if we look at something that isn't tracking tech companies, like a simple S&P 500 fund, ETF, SPY, 2017, we were at $226, now we're at 414 and there are tons of dividends included. Again, at a really low yield, like 1.33% around that, not a whole lot, but that's a huge, massive growth. So while Q yield might look really cool, and you do actually get paid out monthly, which is pretty nice, it makes it a lot more approachable if you actually want to use it for passive income, mainly because you don't have to budget over entire quarters, you can just budget per month, but you would have way more money in your account, even with all these dividends, if you just held a regular ETF that didn't do this. And really that's a big thing that does sort of make these type of ETFs kind of awkward. It's just over the long term, they don't make a lot of sense, simply because the US economy has really been doing incredibly well over the past five years or so. Obviously, we've had crashes and other issues, and these are not immune to crashes. These are actually pretty volatile when crashes hit. Granted, you're getting premium, but your fund is still going down in value, and you risk selling at a loss if you're still opening covered call positions at a price way lower, because if you open at the price that you purchased at right before the crash, the premiums are gonna be super low because no one is expecting the stock to soar that much. And there are actually a lot of these covered call ETFs now. A lot of them have really come into the fold within the past year, especially because passive income has become more and more appealing in the past year. A lot of people are talking about it, or things like fire, retire early. And there are certain ones like the Nationwide Risk Managed Income ETF, NUSI, which has a slightly lower yield, but they deal with more contracts in order to actually reduce the amount of risk. I actually believe that they deal with certain put contracts to help deal with potential risk, and it's far less volatile. And they do talk about guides to utilizing this, maybe an alternative to bond, things like that, volatility dampener. Another one is the DIVO. It's much smaller. All the other ones are much smaller than Q yield. And they do have a similar strategy, but this one's actually pulling from the S&P 500. It's obviously outperforming on dividends. And we can see, yes, a 10% yield or so. But when we go out to the longer duration chart, we can see an actual impressive amount of growth. There's a good amount of growth, a lot of dividends. This one has been a lot luckier when it came to actual calls and things like that. But even if we consider way back when it started, $25 to $35, there's a lot of dividends here. You still would have been better off if you just bought S&P 500. And as mentioned, there are tons of these that have come into the fold like X-Yield, which also deals with the S&P 500. There's one that deals with the Russell 2000, which is a completely rule-based ETF that tracks 2000 of the largest companies in America. Our yield is another version which has a covered call buy right strategy. And a lot of these new ETFs do have a lot of details, a lot of breakdowns. They explain how they work, how effective they are, especially the risk managed income ETF. They have a good amount of data that is easily consumable. They talk about top holdings, unsurprisingly, lots and lots of technology companies, and they do a good job of breaking it down. So you might be thinking, are these worthless then? Are they not worth dealing with? Well, not necessarily. SPY has obviously been very strong over the long term, same with QQQ, and you could just hold a bunch of your own SPY and actually sell your own covered calls on it rather than having to do an ETF. It would be a little more work, but it's something you can manage. You just have to be cautious about not missing out on the spikes. Really, whenever we see these huge spikes and huge growth, sometimes we get corrections, other things like that, but that's where covered call strategies tend to get killed. You want to sell them when the market is not moving much, when it's contained. And you could do this for your own portfolio. In fact, I've done it a lot of the time. I really like covered calls a lot, especially on stocks I think are going to sort of stay flat. But I would be lying if I said that I've never been burned by them before. There was a huge spike up, a huge reevaluation in a stock. And I did make money, obviously, because I was selling a call. I made the premium, but I missed out on a lot of profit. As mentioned before, you are capping your profit when you sell these. 
And the reality is that the market is oftentimes dictated by momentum. We might have pretty clean averages over time. If you were to draw a line down here, it would be a pretty linear, clean growth with tons and tons of spikes. But just because over the long term, it's fairly even doesn't mean these spikes do not exist. And momentum is very important. A lot of times some huge, massive managed fund buys millions and millions of shares of a stock and it goes shooting up and then retail investors get in and it goes shooting up and you have a correction, but then some other big company buys in and it goes shooting up again. Correction, retail investors, it's a whole cycle and momentum moves things. So reality is sometimes you see flat times in the market, relaxed times in the market, dips in the market, but you also see really big surges. And a lot of times when you see these new evaluations, these huge moving price targets, it's because of a surge. It's because of momentum. So it's extremely difficult to deal with that, especially because options have time associated with them. It's very difficult to time the market. And I do think that these covered call ETFs could be useful. It's nice to have consistent dividend income, and they can obviously be super useful if the market is remaining flat. If the market isn't moving much, this position won't move much at all either, but you'll be making dividend income. And on top of that, these ETFs generally have options available for them. So if we go to the options chain, we can see that if you have 100 shares of this, you could be selling covered calls on your covered call ETF, which is kind of funny, but it's something you can do for additional passive income. Now, granted, because it stays so incredibly flat, sometimes the premiums aren't that impressive. We can see because this is a smaller fund, the options chain is not that crazy developed, but we can go out to July 16th and you could sell a covered call for $22 and make around 40 bucks. You could do $23 and make around $5. Again, because things tend to stay pretty flat over the long term, the options chain is not that impressive. You're not going to be raking in tons of cash with this. And it might screw you if you have to sell right before a dividend. That is one thing to consider. One of the few times you get an option exercised early is because of dividend value, but it is an additional possibility you can think of. Overall, I think a lot of these covered call ETFs are kind of clever. I really like covered call strategies. I use them all the time, but generally I like to do it for stocks that I'm holding and I don't think are going to be super high in value until we get some sort of reevaluation. But again, it's hard to time the market. I've missed out on profit because of selling covered calls multiple times. Other times it's been a really nice way to make a fair bit of money. And these are certainly an easy way to get into dividend investing. And depending on your view of the market, if you think it's going to be flat, these could be super appealing. If you think we're going to continue to live in a bull market, it's going to continue to go up like we've seen with the S&P 500 and QQQ, then obviously you're just going to want to be in those funds and maybe even sell really far out of the money covered calls if you really want to try to squeeze out some extra profit. Because when you're buying a fund, you don't select the strike prices. As we mentioned with our Apple example before, if it's too tight, it can really screw you. But there's also the consideration that any of these major stocks are going to need 100 shares to sell covered calls. And 100 shares of, say, Apple is over $12,000, which not everyone might have in their investment account. And even if they have that much in their investment account, they might not want to make almost 100% of their account in one stock. There's a lot to consider, but I wish you best of luck in the market. If you're interested in investing in the market with self-directed trading, a fantastic way to start is with Webull. If you sign up now using my referral link in the description of this video, you'll get two free stocks valued up to $1,850. And these stocks are selected from companies like Facebook, Starbucks, Snap, Google, Procter, Gamble, and more. All the money in your account is yours to invest, trade, and withdraw as you please. There are zero fees associated with depositing money. You just get your stocks and you'll get your buying power immediately. So if you want a fantastic brokerage with mobile, desktop, and web trading, just use the link in the description below.